Hello friends, welcome to Indish Acquisition and Laban. In this video, we will talk to Ms. Medha who just began to study her medical studies. So, Medha did her primary and uh, high school studies in Munich in the state of Bavaria. So, welcome Medha, welcome to the Indish Acquisition and Laban. So, I would like to know maybe because you have gone through such an education system, especially the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. So, I would like to know if what kind of challenges you faced or yeah, what, what was your approach you know, to address such challenges. For me, coming from elementary school where you are almost packed in cotton and everything is a happy family and then being like confronted with the life of a gymnasiastin, it was hard to fit in in the beginning. I was a pretty average to good uh, student in elementary school and my first grade in gymnasium was a 4 equivalent to a D. So uh, it was for me really frustrating and I was really, yeah, I did not understand why I was so bad. And um, I think the first challenge for kids is to understand and to realize that being like studying in a gym in gymnasium is different coming from elementary school you sometimes just have too high expectations from yourself or for your child you think that um, it goes on like that like it was in elementary school but it's just different uh, you have to adapt to new environment the teachers are different you maybe do not have your friends that you had in fourth grade. So you have to connect to new people, find new friends. And uh, the portion is just, it's just more than you have learned in fourth grade. So I think that was one of the hardest parts for me to just try to fit in and try to adapt to this new life as a, as a student in gymnasium. Okay, yeah, that was a pretty good point. You mentioned that the curriculum would be very large when you once you enter the gymnasium, and uh, yeah, the kids would have to be self independent and so on. That was a pretty good point. So I would like to ask you maybe if there are different gymnasiums, how like the, the people want to choose or the parents want to choose the nearest one. So is there any any specific details on that? Can you give us? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. So of course there are differences in different schools. For example, my gymnasium had a focus on languages and on sciences. Like my school was a MINT school, that means Mathematik, Informatik, Naturwissenschaften und Technik, which is like maths, informatics and just sciences. It's a specification and um, a focus on those branches. Then there are some gymnasiums who have a musical part or who specify in sports. So depending on the talents and the interests of your kids, you can choose which gymnasium suits your child. And usually gymnasium also have Wahlunterricht, that is like more uh, voluntary subjects or voluntary courses which are there for fun and uh, they're the offer of different gymnasiums also it, it just differs and regarding to that you can choose what suits your kid okay thank you Mira. that was pretty good that uh, how to choose one gymnasium which uh, based on the kids interest and so on so i have recently i've heard about this gh g9 something close to the abit2 part so can you give us more details on that okay so, um, G8 and G9 means that you finish your gymnasium in 8 years or in 9 years. If you are in G8, you write your Abitur, you graduate from gymnasium in 12th grade and if you are in G9, you graduate in 13th grade. It's more or less the same portion but stretched out in 9 years rather than in 8 years. Um, nowadays, the schools are changing back to G9, uh, so that means when your children are now in elementary school, they all are going through nine years of gymnasium. So now we got to know about what this G8 and G9 system is. So now I think it's uh, it would be more interesting us to know about the last three grades of the 
just before the arbitrator, what, what precautions we have to take or is there any extra effort we have to put to finish the arbitrator. Okay. So most of the parents, like we have, uh, as those are from India background, so Indian background, they know that the classes after 10th grade and 11th and 12th are very important in order to enter engineering or medicine courses. So is there a similar system in this GIG9, the last three classes to be able to, yeah. Uh, indeed, there is a similarity to India and to Germany. If you are in G8 standard, then 11th and 12th grade is important to you. And if you are in G9 standard, 12th and 13th grade is important to you. And those two grades will heavily determine your graduation grade. Uh, your graduation grade, if you are graduating from gymnasium, it is an Abitur. In your full form is Allgemeine Hochschulreife, which means you have a lot of general knowledge which is taught to you um, during your Gymnasialzeit and especially during 12th or 13th grade or 11th and 12th grade. And um, in these two grades, you start collecting marks, you start collecting points. And um, then in the ending, you have five subjects where you write your final exam and of course those will count again double. And um, like there is a difference between gymnasium, like between one and other, another gymnasium, there are also differences between the states and how you write your Abitur in Germany. So, for example, in Bavaria, you don't have Leistungskurse, as in other states of Germany, you have something called Leistungskurse and Grundkurse. Uh, these are just two different kinds of curriculums you can choose, and if you choose Leistungskurs, it means that you specify on a subject. Uh, also here, the last two years are really important for your final grade it's like um, the last two years count approximately 65 percent and then again your final exam counts 35 percent and the both combined make your final grade your abitur grade with which you can apply to universities or colleges Okay, now that we got to know how difficult it is to get the Abitur grade based on the 65% and 35%, and, but you have joined the medical studies, that's congrats on that first of all. Thank you. But it's, I definitely know that it's very difficult to get uh, a seat in the medical college, so how is it? Can you explain uh, a bit detail on that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, to get into medical studies it is a little bit difficult a lot of people say it's even harder to get into medicine than rather passing medicine and uh, i can't really contribute on that yet but maybe maybe it is like that so uh, the difference between engineering or other subjects and medicine is that medicine is centrally distributed so you don't apply university by university but rather you apply through a central um, online portal and then you get your medicine place. In order to get a medical seat in the university you have to fulfill a couple of criteria. Okay, so 30% of the places are just distributed by your grades. So Rahul in his uh, past video also talked about the NC numerus clausus and in medicine it's really high. It's 1.0. So if you are better than 1.0 or you have a really good 1.0, then you have chances in being one of those 30%. For the next 60% of the places, the universities not only look on your grades, but also on different criteria, like if you have um, medical experiences or if you have written a special test called TMS. And the last 10% are given to people regardless to grade. For example, um, Big Bird, which is included in that, is the Landarztquote, which means 
people who um, obligate living for 10 years and um, being a doctor for 10 years in small villages who have less doctors and uh, a pretty little infrastructure and who are willing to live there and work there for 10 years. So these are the different options to get a medicine place, which means that you don't particularly have to write a really good abitur. Of course it helps, but even I know people who have a grade which is something around three or two and still got a medicine place. Yeah, thank you very much uh, about this detailed description. Otherwise, uh, people had a kind of wrong impression that if you only if you get a bit to 1.0, then only you can do the medicine. But as you said, there are other criteria. Even if you get a lesser grade, but which is not better than 1.0, but still there is a possibility to get into medicine based on the criteria you have just mentioned. So, yeah, then maybe one question regarding. Uh, how, what kind of tips do you give for the students who want to enter the medicine after their abitur? So, yeah, how difficult it is and what they have to do. Next. Okay, so um, my first tip would be be interested in medicine. It is a hard study, it is a hard path, but if you show interest in that subject, then it will be achievable. So the second tip I would give you is be ready to move out of your city or out of your home place. You usually don't get your medicine seed where you want to get it. So it's sometimes sad to say goodbye, but just see it as an opportunity to start a new life. And the third part would be, be patient. Not everyone gets uh, his medicine place at the first try. Sometimes it just takes a while and you can utilize that time for learning, for um, practicing, uh, practicing, looking if medicine is really the subject you want to study or um, collecting points, writing tests. So you can just utilize the time and then if you get your medicine study place, then you will be ready. So thank you very much Meda. That was a very detailed information on how to get into medicine and what challenges you have to face and how you can cope with them. So that was really useful. I would wish you all the best for your medical studies. Thanks. And so for the viewers, if you find this information useful, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay connected. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye.